Welcome. I'm City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge. Um, I'm the City Councilor from Ward 6 and Chair on the Committee on Social Services, Veterans, Cultural, and Recreation. To my right, I'd like to introduce the City Councilor from Ward 4, Gina Louise Sierra. And from Ward 7 is City Councilor Alyssa Klein. I also would like to announce that this meeting is being audio video recording that is being taken both by NCTV and also by Adam Cohen from the North Street Association. I would like approval of the minutes of October 14th, 2014, public hearing on the resolution of vibrant sidewalks and also the minutes of October 20th, 2014. Move approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> okay, so we're supposed to be having um, Jay Shashetti, Vice President of Shelter and Housing from ServiceNet, and they might be having problems finding parking, so give them some time. Is there anything we can move? Do, Not unless you would like to move up. Yeah, I the think that we The committee uh, with the discussion on the resolution of vibrant sidewalks. Sure, let's do that. Yeah. Okay, um, we know for the month of December, the two hours will be spent strictly on doing a dialogue, looking at the language, adding language or deleting language. Mm -hmm. Also, I talked with one day and she said, we do have to open it up to the public. So I think I will do that first. Open what up? The meeting? This meeting, yes, if somebody wants it? to talk. Oh, they're always yes. open though. Yeah, well sometimes you don't. So we will open that right off the bat. As soon as we come in, we'll ask the public if they would like to speak. And um, is there anything that you want to suggest, Alyssa, for that meeting? No, I mean, I think, um, well, I guess I'll say something. So we have uh, copies of the minutes that Pam took for us yes. from both of the hearings. Yes. And I have uh, pretty extensive notes that I took, and I don't, I'm happy to share those with you if you feel like it would be sure. useful. Okay. Um, and if you have any, it'd be great, because sometimes, you know, different people hear and record mm -hmm. different things. And what I was planning on doing is just uh, going through all of these different pieces, the different the minutes in my own personal notes, and just kind of highlighting anything that was kind of a recurrent theme yeah. that we heard, sure. and uh, any discussion of particular language that people, for instance, uh, yeah. I know that Bill Newman suggested a couple of things, um, a couple of different people suggested a couple of different things, and uh, just maybe putting those out there for our discussion and sure. decide if we do in fact want to kind of alter language mm -hmm. um, if there's anything we want to take out um, and just kind of do it as a bit of a brainstorming session I guess is that you two fine. had in mind? Yeah, yeah I know that um, Councillor Adams has is working on amendments based on what Mr. Newman had suggested of the language. I have a written so, um, is he, he submitting those to us officially? I, I believe he is. I will check with him again. I, I sort of I sent him, I think, the timeline and said that December would be the month to do it. So I'll, but I'll uh, tell him that again. Did he send you something official here? No. We had it taped. We took it right off the tape. Exactly mm -hmm. what Bill Newman had stated. Right. Mm -hmm. but so if I have we're getting been, official language from, oh, from Bill? No, from, no. from Councilor Adams. Um, I will. I will check. You're getting official city. language from who? Counsel, Councilor Adams had been, based on the public hearing, um, was working on crafting some right. new language based on what Mr. Yeah. Newman had making said. it okay. an official okay. amendment. So. Right. Okay. Right. I, Incorporating those ideas yeah. into. It. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. I also talked with Wendy after. We're finished and we are done with the language, put it together, adding language, deleting language. It does not go to ordinance, it comes back to City Council when they set for a second approval. If not that night of City Council, City Councilors can say, we'd like to send it back to ordinance. 
Procedurally, do we need to, anything that we want to change, do we need to do it, craft it as an amendment? Or can we just kind of rewrite, essentially? Um, I think so. Well, if you ever notice on ordinance where they delete and yeah. add, yeah. so we would just draw a line and put down what we're at. Okay. Good. But I wanted to clarify that with Wendy. Does, do we automatically send it to ordinance? Where does it go? She said, because it's done its first reading, you're spending time in your committee either adding or either deleting language. Once you're completed, then send it to city council. City council can make a recommendation. Send it back to ordinance or go ahead and do the second, the second vote down. And we'll be done. Is there any chance that we can um, request that does Pam, I can't remember, she, she comes to this meeting. It's she does, but late. Yeah. 4.30, 20 Because I wonder if it would, um, just for her to be the person that's kind of recording our ideas and changing the language, if maybe we shouldn't either schedule the meeting for 4.30 so she can be here from the start, or if we have any other business for the first half hour till she gets here, mm -hmm. or we could just, I guess, do discussion for well, the first half hour. We could discuss. And if we have people she gets in the audience, here. I mean. Yeah, there might be um, I know, I was wishing that Wendy would let her out earlier, but Wendy won't. No, so the public comment would not be in the minutes. So, I mean, in the hearing, the comments are in the minutes, but for the public comment for our committee meeting, those are not in the minutes? Well, they're not recorded. They're recorded, yeah. yeah. So we could do that before she arrives. Yeah. <coughs> Ruth issues the hair, so will be on hers. Maybe we might want to do another hearing. <laughs> I, so. I have to tell you, Alyssa and both Gina Louise, I think we did very well in Northampton and especially Florence. And when I had talked with Bill Newman myself, he told me to send him um, the flyer, mm -hmm. which I did. I mailed it to his office. He said, I will be there. Yeah. And I was so happy he was there because I explained the situation to him. Right. And um, I was happy about that. Yeah, yeah, we had a good time. We had a good discussion. Let me get both. Good. You know, now that I think of it, I um, took notes by hand for the first Vibrant Sidewalks thing, so I'm not going to transcribe them, but I will send you ones from the second one, which I did on my laptop. Sounds great. I wish I knew how to do shorthand. Yeah, but then no one else could read it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's something else here. What's on the agenda? Uh, Marianne, you wanted to talk about the December. That was it. That was it. We just talked about it, how we were going to do it, how we were going to lay it out, what mm -hmm. we were going to talk about. Is the only other thing on the agenda? Yep. Yeah. Right here. Yep. Discuss the resolution of violent sidewalk. That was number nine that I took out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the committee will discuss the resolution on vibrant sidewalks. And I think you pretty well covered quite a bit of it, Alyssa and both Gina Louise. Mm -hmm. So if those folks forgot to come. They, I'll tell you right now, you never forget to, to come. Really? I think they might be having a parking problem. Okay. You've met Jay before from um, ServiceNet on the shelters. Did he, was he at the um, CDBG grant? I have met Katie at Shelton. Have you met Katie? Yeah, she's a new employee. Okay. Hi. I want to thank the both of you for being here. Apparently there was a little misunderstanding about your time. Yeah. But that's okay, because I know how long you speak, and you'll be out of here on time. But I would like to introduce Jay Shetty. Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> Vice President for the Shelter and Housing of ServiceNet. And we have a new employee who has taken Danielle's place. 
Is that correct? Wanda's place. Yeah, Wanda. Wanda. Wanda and we, we had a little reorganization with uh, the management of the Hampshire County programs. Okay. So we have Katie Marinecki, Director of Hampshire County Programs, ServiceNet Inc. I would like to introduce I'm City Councilor Marianne Labarge from Ward 6 and Chair of Social Services, Veterans, Cultural and Recreation. To my right is Gina Louise Chiara, who's the Councilor from Ward 4. And to my left is City Councilor from Ward 7, Alyssa Klein. So, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, as you know, uh, ServiceNet has been running um, homeless shelters for back since they, you know, it, we began, you know, housing people in emergency shelters in the late 80s, early 90s, I'm not sure exactly what the time was. And um, over the years, it has developed um, a robust system of services, and that includes uh, funding sources from Department of Housing and Community Development, the City of Northampton through the community, uh, CDBG funds uh, from the HUD um, Housing and Urban Development Federal Sources, and uh, and then donations and various other sources, Project Red, um, fuel assistance that helps out with the heating of the shelters in the winter. So by the time we're all done, at the end of the year writing grants and, you know, having and state funding, there's about 24 sources that we apply to every single year. Um, so it's pretty much an ongoing project that starts sometime in September, ends in May, um, gives us a summer off, so we're pretty great. <laughs> uh, so today, you know, in Hampshire County, we have uh, 32 units of uh, permanent housing, and we have a 20-bed um, shelter in the city-owned building, Grove Street. Uh, we also have just recently opened um, our interfaith cot shelter on Center Street. So in those, both in that has 22, 20, 20, 20, 20. Who does? So there's 20 beds at the, at the cot shelter. Okay. Um, both so those, there's 20 beds at Grove Street and 20 beds at the cot shelter. Yep. And then we have another overflow shelter at, in East Hampton at our Lady, Lady. Um, Soros Church. Is that the church? Yeah, that's the church. The basement of the church. The basement of the church. And that actually opens tomorrow. Tomorrow. And there's six individuals that go into. Now, we're still staying at the same capacity, mm -hmm. which I just heard um, Councillor Klein mention about the 20 beds at the Grove Street, because mm -hmm. I know we cannot bring that up, not unless we add it on to the house. Right. But the cot shelter. It seems like we're staying at a level of 20. Is that the capacity? That's yeah. your legal capacity. Yeah. yeah. Because it seems like we have a problem because we're still short of having shelters, even if we're using East Stanton. Mm -hmm. Is that still the problem? Well, I, because yeah. we don't have enough of sites. Well, the the winter shelter that's opened, um, Craig Stores and Amherst, has alleviated some of that issue of being overcrowded in the shelters. You know, I mean, on the, on the coldest nights of the year, it, you know, we we won't shut our doors. We find a way to get people inside. And last year was a very difficult year. Terrible. Um, so, you know, we kept the facility open during the day. Um, we ran, you know, it's, we, we, we had, it, it produced probably, uh, you know, a, a 20 to $30,000 deficit on top of the one we already have, um, providing those extra services last year. So, you know, it was it was not an easy year. But amazingly enough, people were um, fairly cooperative. We didn't have a lot of issues. Our shelters that we run in Western are generally safe and quiet as compared to a more urban mm -hmm. setting shelter. And they're so. both of them are co ed? <coughs> Do you have to ever turn anybody down, like on the Center Street one? There'll be nights when, you know, people come at 5 o'clock, they're waiting to get in, and, you know, there might be 25 people there talking to Craig's doors. Um, 
Then we have, you know, we collaborate with Soldier On also. They provide the transportation to East Hampton and they staff. Okay. okay. So, so that's that's all done on a, on a volunteer basis. So there's. Um, and if we have to turn people away, um, we do turn them, you know, we let them know about the Amherst shelter and we provide bus passes yeah. to send them okay. there. Okay. So, so it's become a very, a pretty good, you know, connected piece of service. And there's times when they, they were full last year and they called and said, hey, get, you know, yeah, we got a bed. Which soldiers on John Downey, who's, which I have to agree, <coughs> is probably one of the most wonderful, dedicated mm -hmm. director with soldiers on. Yeah. Do they have room up there? Say, if, if I'm hearing, if you are saying with the shelter on Center Street that you cannot accept them but you will call soldiers on, they will be giving them a pass, or can they go to soldiers on? There must be room up to soldiers if there was, on. If there was a huge issue, I would call Jack in a second. We also collaborated with them out in Pittsfield, and we had you know, increased 20 beds of oh, winter beds out there also, between service net and soldier on, we do the transportation. Some increase at our facility, some at their facility and their shelter also. So there are ways he will not say no if it is crisis. We're starting fast this year. It's not, it's not just here, it's in Pittsfield, it's people are feeling it in Springfield. Um, it's higher now, huh? There's more people it, it, that yeah. are homeless. Yeah, and you know, what's happening across nationwide is that they're saying that the, the homeless population is dropping, but they've, they've put a lot of resources into the veteran, so the chronic veteran homeless person has dropped quite a bit which kind of stabilizes the number, but the people that aren't involved in that system, that's that's going up. What proportion of uh, the homeless population in Northampton would you say are vets? In, in, in who we see, it probably runs about, it, it uh, you know, it depends. We had about 20% two years ago. I know that number stuck in my head because Jack and I talked about it. Last year it was down a little bit because we did a better job of saying, hey, identifying, you know, because sometimes, uh, you know, a homeless vet will make a choice, no, I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. um, so we tend to have the people that won't interact with Soldier On, but we'll still talk with their case manager and say, hey, look, here's what they have. You know, they have housing subsidies. Can you do anything with that? So there's been more of a coordinated effort. Last year I think it was down about 16 or 17 percent. It's it's um, it's a problem that's going pretty well on the veteran side. It's about resources. Is committed that. So at the shelter on Grove Street and also on Center Street, do you get a lot of veterans there? Yeah, we, you know, if we have a hundred people, there's probably anywhere from ten to twenty vets that circulate in mm -hmm. and out. Yeah. Just to um, clarify this, Soldier On doesn't actually have um, shelter space for just kind of overnight sheltering, right? You're talking they have permanent housing that they're kind no, they of have a they have a shelter out on Leeds campus. Yeah, I've seen it. They and, they and does it operate the same way that people come at the end of the day kind of thing? Well, they will. Yeah, they'll have somebody show up. The the way the the veterans they have very odd um, catchment areas, so. This one here probably serves, um, well, it's mass, all of Western and mass, Massachusetts, and then Southern Vermont, oh, you know, here, New York, that, that slice of New York that's on that, kind of, on that border, and then the top of, you know, and most of, most of Connecticut, I think. And how many beds do they have? They have over 200 beds up there. On any given yeah. evening, they have 20. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they've, they've built, um, they're building housing on that campus for women. Um, they're retaking, they took some space there, so they have that. They're Agawam, they've got a lot of housing that they're building. They're really moving forward. So that's that's taken, a, that'll take the numbers down for us. And uh, are you talking about the BA on the housing for women? No, nope, this is Soldier On. Oh. They're, they're the ones that develop. 
the VA has it, the VA case management, which is another, that's the government side, soldier on the nonprofit side. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, VASH, what they call veteran, you know, assisted shelter housing program. Well, so. you know, like with Jack Downing, I mean, he helped us even with Grove Street Inn, mm -hmm. working very closely with Pet Keller and Social Services and Veterans Affairs, like with cap, kitchen cabinets, mm -hmm. whatever, because he had so much contact, yeah. you know, so you are still working closely with him, correct? Yeah, I've, I've worked with Jack for probably 25 years, so, right. you okay. know, we know each other well. And what do you do, Katie? I manage the two shelters, uh, the Grove Street Inn Shelter and the um, shelter on 40th Center Street, the Integrated Winter Shelter. And I also oversee our 32 units. Um, there's two houses in Florence and one in North Maple. Where's the one in Florence? Um, there's one on North, uh, 17 North Maple Street and Strive. And everything's going fine with them? Everything's going well, they're full. Yeah, so it's, you know, I, and there is, you know, and recently there's also the, you know, the family issue we do um, in Greenfield and Pittsfield, the big family, but we are um, expanding our shelter for homeless families. We case manage the Greenfield motels. We just started that about two months ago. There's about 87 families in those motels up there. And, in um, Greenfield? Yeah, and we're beginning to lease up apartment units. Okay. Also Greenfield or more? Greenfield, we're, we're starting to come this way too. Okay. We're now, trying to move closer to so that we lease those up and you know have people out of the motels. Yeah, yeah what is the what is the waiting list for that look like? <laughs> There's about four hundred and fifty families today in motels in the western Massachusetts. Over two thousand statewide. And there's literally twenty five families a day coming in. System, so it's uh, yeah. There's yeah. 135 kids in there. We had a housing partnership come to our committee, and that was brought up about how families, you know, the mother, father, and the children being in motels. And I know of an incident of that's occurring, mm -hmm. and they've been there for over a year. Small children, two years old, and like four. They cannot find them a place to live. Yeah. So we're doing a, a, a heavy expansion of that in in these counties and over in Berkshire yeah. County because we've had we've had a reconfiguring of the homeless services in Western Massachusetts, where Hampshire County was attached to the continuum of care that was part of Hampton County. Mm -hmm. What has happened in the, in the past year is that Berkshire, Franklin, and Hampshire are now a federal continuum of care hmm. and they we, and so th this has moved out of the city used to oversee those HUD federal funds for transitional and permanent housing that's moved to Hilltown Community Development Corporation overseen by them and then the three because the rural there's more of a rural nature and the issues of rural homelessness are different mm -hmm. than in the city it's really <coughs> the transportation the employment issues you know the isolation is much different so it's been, to this point, um, you know, it's been, it's been a good thing. It's helped us leverage more funds by having, now we do all the sheltering in the three counties um, for families and, and individuals. And that gives us more, more of a, a better grant writing process because our system is, looks larger and more leverage funds from, you know, in more communities that, from you know community donations that helps. You can't get those federal funds without saying, hey, the community's pitching in. The Northampton's great pitches in and really stands behind the shelter program. You know, it's a good place to do business for us. But unfortunately, it's uh, things are on the move. Massachusetts does a great job at counting its homeless population, and so it's on the rise here. And other states say, well, ours is going down, but they're not as developed and they don't have, you know, you know, we have a resource center here where all the providers come to. So mm -hmm. we know where everybody is and everybody works in collaboration. So you can find anybody that's 
touch and homeless services in Hampshire County will use our Center Street resources. Mm -hmm. Are there concerns? me. Um, is there a concern with the change in the gubernatorial uh, administration that things will get harder or will it be significantly different? Do you suppose? Um, I, you know, there's, you know, I, I, I don't think, I don't think it, it's going to have a major impact on us. That's just my thought. I, I think that the current undersecretary, Aaron Gornstein, um, who has. A, he has the knowledge, he was in the private sector dealing with this issue, and so he, he knows what's going on and he, he knows what the issues are. I just hope they retain him. Um, and I think that the person that they have just, um, from Chelsea, that's the new Department of Housing, is gonna come in to head up that Department of Housing and Community Development. I know that he had a good relationship with Aaron, so hopefully we'll stay on this track and, you know, it's a, it's a tough issue to pay on individual homes and see that it's really, you know, people are falling out of other state services and they're with us and that's their last stop on the continuum of service. You know, we're not a real treatment program, we try to be, but, you know, we're not, we don't have that kind of resource. And that's what the advantage of having Center Street is, is because you've had, it increases our case management because you know South Middlesex Opportunity Council's case manager comes and Elliott Homeless Services, that case, you know, and they're all small groups of case managers, but we put them all in the same room. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good team and it's a nice collaboration. Well, I, I can deal with that person. I know him, let me take that so that it's around the table saying, ah, who works best for this individual? Say it like with the grocery down the mm -hmm. How many staff now? During the winter time, they're there all day, right? If the weather is cold, they're not sent out. They're there all day. Yeah. So, what is the ratio of staff? If you have 20 beds, you have 20 people, how much is the staffing at 24 hours a day? We have one overnight staff, and generally there is, you could say, one and a half on the four to 11 shift. So one overnight staff mm -hmm. who, I just have some concerns here because of behaviors, mm -hmm. which do happen, it does occur. What is the procedure? One staff person, 20 individuals at that home, how does that one person handle mm -hmm. that behavior besides whoever is in there, the 19 other, okay? How do you accommodate their concerns of not being frightful? Well, that, you know, I mean, believe me, it's, it's something what we wrestle with. Um, we don't have the money to, you know, I mean, over the years, the staffing level has dropped. Um, the, you know, How much has it dropped, Chuck? Well, I, you know, in, in in the six years I've been overseeing all the shelter programs at ServiceNet, uh, when I first came on board, we had more staffing on the second shift than there was more. Mm -hmm. you know. um, but you know, as we suffered a little cut here or cut there, you know, we don't get as much fuel assistance, we don't get as much project credit. It's all that stuff starts to you know come down. You know, I mean, we're running pretty much a year-round program there, and about two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. Goes pretty quickly um, mm -hmm. because the cost of doing business keeps going up. We have these mandates to have the computer system to enter all the data into the homeless management information system. That's a, you know that's expensive. To the you know we have an eye call system. You know my phone's never off. <laughs> Katie's is never off. <laughs> you know we have a lot of you know our staff all participating in that. We are fortunate that you know we've had. We, the acts of violence that occurred in any of these shelters. I, uh, it has I happened. I can't, I, you know. It has it, happened. It's not, it's maybe once. Maybe Because I know of an incident. Mm -hmm. But my so, question okay. is, that one person on the night shift, is that an awake staff 
or is it a overnight sleep? Because some places do do that. Mm -hmm. so it's that's a big responsibility, <laughs> 20 people to one staff. Yeah, that's, that's about the ratio that exists in most of these. If you were went to, you know, down to our friends and all in, in spring, you know, there's 137 people in there and, and a good night. And they probably they have a lot of them. And what about on uh, Center Street? What's the overnight staffing there? It's also one. A with one the, person? With a person and, sleeping in. And the per yes, and the overnight sleeps. We so there's two, volunteer. one overnight and one person awake. Mm -hmm. And if that person should have a problem or a behavior problem, awakes that person, correct? That's correct. And the assist if needed. I would feel better if they did that over there too. We just need more volunteers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's it just the, the resource just isn't there. You know, we just so we fight hard just to keep the doors open. We're probably the most under resourced <coughs> state. And I've worked with every state agency in every service, and it's, um, yeah. You've been with service now for how long, Chad? Six years. How long? Six years. ServiceNet and for all the hard work that all your staff do and taking care of our homeless people. Thank you. Thank you. My own winter. Yeah. Always. We're not getting any snow this year. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no trash this year. Penny Burke, is who is the Executive Director of the North Denton Center of the Arts, and Richard Wagner, thank you for being here, President of the Board of the North Denton Community Art Trust. I'm City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge from Ward 6, and the Chair of Social Services, Veterans, Cultural, and Recreation. To my right is Councilor Gina Louise Sierra from Ward 4, and to my left is City Councilor Alyssa Klein. So, we need to talk. So. We've invited both Penny and Richard to come today and see if we can open the doors to a problem, apparently, that we'd like to solve with you if we can. Penny. Right. Well, I have to say, um, I, I'm not going to necessarily couch this in terms of being a problem. I think that the, the topic for conversation was really what is, if anything, the relationship between the Northampton Center for the Arts and the city of Northampton? And as I have explained, as I explained in a previous meeting, and in, you know, off the record conversations with Mary Ann, uh, legally, in terms of ordinances, there's no longer any relationship between the city and the Northampton Center for the Arts. Uh, we have a loose relationship because of first night, because the city funds a small portion of first night, but the city definitely uh, supports the event in terms of uh, services. There's no question about it. Um, I feel uh, there are probably things that I would have said that I'm not going to say right now because you know this uh, recent development with the bid has a huge impact on us, the Center for the Arts, and. It obviously has an impact on the city. 
and I feel almost as if, you know, this meeting was scheduled a long time ago, and I realize that the purpose of it is not to discuss that relationship, but I think that that's going to be a game changer in terms of a future relationship, if any. <laughs> and I mean it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I do. You know, this, this city was responsible for basically creating, create, the city designated the Northampton Center for the Arts uh, as the stewards, shall we say, this good word we use, stewardship. 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 We, we were the, the city basically held the lease in the building in Sullivan Square, and the, the Center for the Arts was formed as an independent nonprofit, but it was very much formed, uh, we can't go back, but at the time, Mayor Musanti had a huge hand in that, and the original board of the Center for the Arts was appointed by the mayor. So the two were inextricably uh, attached in the beginning. Um, the, the city itself was committed to the success, really, of the Center for the Arts, and, and why shouldn't they have been? It was a community arts center. And um, probably, uh, I would say, a year after the center was incorporated, uh, their director got the idea to start first night. The reason I'm only bringing it up, because the Center for the Arts has been and always will be way more than first night. That was really the relationship that became sustained over the years. Um, when I became director of the Center for the Arts, which was 10 years ago, our relationship to the city pretty much had to do with uh, a repeated series of challenges, shall we say, that developed as occupants, as tenants in the building um, at 17 New South Street, because the original purchase and sale agreement that the city had <coughs> was with one developer, and that developer sold the building to another. Why does any of this matter? It actually doesn't. I'm just saying that I used to have regular contact with the mayor, with uh, Terry Anderson in her capacity, I think she was like called community development coordinator. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually, unfortunately had some interactions that involved the city solicitor. In other words, the city, there, there simply was a relationship there had to be because they were the leaseholders. Once the lease expired, that was it. Penny, when um, we contacted you about coming again, because this is the second time since we, do you, Louise and I <clears throat> have been part of the council, we, um, we're hoping that you would come with some really concrete suggestions about ways in which we might be able to help to facilitate more of a um, solid relationship with the city. And I'm wondering if you did come equipped kind of with some really concrete um, ideas of what we might be able to do. What would that you like the relationship to look like? Well, I have to say it's hard, it's hard to answer that question since there there all of a sudden is no more bid because in a way they were our sort of, they were kind of a crossover. We acted as kind of their cultural, it's kind of a cultural arm and, and they facilitated events that we had. So I kind of envisioned, well, let me go back. I've been told, and please correct me if I'm wrong because you're the city councilors and I'm not, that the only type of relationship that the Center for the Arts can, could have with the city would have something to do with the, um, what do you say? the creation of, of, some, of an ordinance. We, we no longer have an ordinance that relates the city in any way to the Center for the Arts. There was an ordinance that was on the books that said the mayor appoints the board of the Northampton Center for the Arts. I think that, uh, you know, and now I'm just going to kind of turn to Richard, you know, the, the, I have to, because it's hard to talk about the Center for the Arts without talking about the, with the Arts Trust, you know. Once we lost our venue, and once we, uh, you know, threw our hat into the ring with the Arts Trust, which is a, another organization whose mission is basically to, you know, sustain and support arts in, in, in a physical space, which is very similar to the Center for the Arts mission, I think what we're looking for is some kind of formal, but not financial, support that can be written into the books 
that, that would accommodate could this. You, could you look at that, please? Now, the Center of Arts, you had board of directors, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were involved also with Terry Anderson and whoever the um, players were involved with the Center of Arts. When Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels came aboard with that, did you know about that ordinance happening? Did, well, you mean that the ordinance was going to be deleted? Yeah, as I knew in advance that the ordinance was going to be deleted. I mean, I think we've gone through this before. You know, it's, an, I, it's a very awkward situation because when we, because the mayor knew that our lease was expiring because we had gone to the mayor and we said, we're not sure that we have any place to go. This was when the Arts Trust was yeah. formed, but we didn't have a place to go. And we were told by the mayor that he would help us at least find a temporary office. And what seemed to become apparent was that if there was no longer an ordinance on the books, then the city had basically mm, no impetus, no reason necessarily to support the Center for the Arts, even in terms of providing office space. And this it was requested, as far as I can understand, uh, that this ordinance be deleted because it, we were su supposedly non-compliant, because the ordinance read that the Center for the Arts should have a board of directors appointed by the mayor. And that was the original ordinance, mm -hmm. and then it I think you, I told you this before, it became a self-sustaining board, and nobody ever went back and changed <coughs> the ordinance. That's but, it. you know, from my perspective, it was, kind of, it was kind of a catch, it was kind of a catch-22. Nothing we could do about it. You can't... But ordinances can come back. But, I mean, you described the relationship that's previously being more like the city was your landlord, so I, I assume that's not really the kind of relationship you'd like, but I guess what we're still asking is what, what kind of relationship would you like, regardless of ordinances or whatnot, but what, what would you like the relationship to be? I mean, you, you said, you said uh, formal but not financial. What does that well, mean? Well, I have to say not financial because there's no, I mean, there so are, what is formal mean? There's, there's no money. Well, I suppose I'm, what do I mean? Uh, I mean, there's I'm the this new feeling, landlord. isn't it? Oh, you're the new landlord. Thank that. you. You're the new landlord. <laughs> right? I mean, I think there's there's formal and there's informal. And informal, I can imagine um, you know, things that I think are already happening to some extent, which is letters of support for proposals, um, press oh, releases going out about events. Mm -hmm. um, I well, mean, I think that we need to think creatively about the ways in which the city um, can, oh. you know, kind of well, let, me, the let, me, let me get a little more, center for the let arts. me get a little more specific. You know, there's an, there's an arts council that, that, again, since the last time we had this meeting has been reinvented. One of the things that we were pushing very, very strong for was actually some kind of integration of the Center for the Arts with the Arts Council under the umbrella of something called an Arts and Culture Department. That's already been created, but it's been created without us. So I would just say that, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, the train left the station and we're, and we're on the other side of the tracks. I mean, that's, there's nothing, think, things literally have happened since the last time we got together. And I feel, you can't go back and change something that exists. Uh, I personally, and this has nothing to do with the Arts Trust, this has to do with the Center for the Arts. I would have liked, after 10 years of being involved in public arts in this city and, and events that benefit uh, the community and the arts in the city, to have been included in the conversation about a reinvention of, uh, of who represents arts in the city. If you go back, and this is such an ancient history here, but if you go back mm -hmm. and you look at that old cultural plan that was formed, this was a collaboration among a number of organizations, but primarily the Arts Council, the Center for the Arts, and actually the, the arts in the school, school system. You know? Is there no one that's involved with the um, Center for the Arts that's involved now with the Arts Council? Not in, in any, any way. way. There's, no, not in any and way. Is there some reason why um, there hasn't been an exploration of having somebody on the Arts Council that is directly involved with the Center for the Arts? 
Um, no, but up until recently, I mean, I feel as if the Arts Council itself has been redefined and I don't yet understand it based on this new department. In other words, I've been told it's an, it's an advisory board or an advisory council. I think that uh, it was a way of separating the city department from a 501c3, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I really, and initially it wouldn't have made, I have to say to tell you, it wouldn't have made sense for a member of the board of the Center for the Arts to be in the Arts Council because the Arts Council was literally reviewing these grants, you know, and we were providing the venue for many of these things to take place. So there was a relationship, but I don't know that it would have been appropriate, let's put it that way, for us to be sitting on the board. What, what I'm trying to suggest is that I feel that there was a, too late now again, a kind of a missed opportunity, but maybe not, to collaborate in some form. We end up, the Center for the Arts, sort of being, sort of being involved in all of the things that for whatever reason the Arts Council, but it's something different now, is not interested in doing. Example, Arts Night Out. Originally, when that committee was formed to to take that event over from the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, our informal group thought it would be best that the city, or not the city, but the Arts Council act as fiscal sponsor because that seemed the right thing to do. The Arts Council board at that time, four years ago or something, three or four years ago, said that wasn't a part of their mission. That's when we picked it up. Like, right, a very small thing, but as an example, right now um, there's an effort that's being made by the UMass Extension Office to do a series of arts entrepreneurship, um, I don't know, like seminars or workshops or whatever. And originally, the, both the Arts Council and the Center for the Arts and other arts people in Northampton were involved. Just the way the cards fell is the Center for the, I'm acting as a representative of arts from Northampton with Burns Maxey, who's the city arts person from East Hampton. But we actually are a little, we're both arts people, but we're kind of apples and oranges arts mm -hmm. people because she's a city employee and I'm <laughs> whatever I am, <laughs> you know? So I feel as if we, you know, again, I've been seeing what the mayor has presented um, in terms of what he envisions this new department to be. I assume that you meet with Brian Foote as well, and Brian can probably explain that to you. But I mean, I feel like I would have liked to have been part of it. Well, I would have liked to have been included in the conversation because it's been something, it's been on the Center for the Arts agenda for a number of years. That was one of the ways that we thought we might be able to reinvent ourselves if we were unable to find a venue. Now, it looks like we have a new landlord, so. Mm -hmm. So true. So, so true. But you know, I mean, you can speak too to the, I mean, in terms of the Arts Trust, the support of the city has been. Well, we're, I mean, the, the city, look, we're, you know, we're a private nonprofit C3. We came together because people had a mission in mind. I came aboard later than, than Penny, certainly. Um, but it was a real clear mission to, to acquire and protect and provide a portable space for creative work. Um, it happens that they needed it and <laughs> knew it was time was coming, time was coming up for the lease to come up. Um, but you know, so last October we got the building on Holly Street, and um, yeah, since we got it, the, the, the city support has, has, in my estimation, has been where the city can offer you support, which is <coughs> letters of, of, mm -hmm. of, of confidence and recommendation um, when going for grants, um, having the city make us aware if a grant pops up, that happened once, it'd be greater be great if it happened that should more. that definitely should happen more often i will say that during the years that terry was yeah. An anderson was here for whatever reason it was more incorporated in, in her job i i don't think a week or two went by then i wouldn't get a grant recommendation not that all of them were you know 
I said you won. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like someone's pursuing it, too. Ooh, that's right. Someone is pursuing it. <laughs> and I've offered to help with that grant process, right. too. So no, and, that's, and believe me, that's, you know, that's important. Right? Yeah. But yeah, and it's important. It's important uh, for for the arts trust, but I mean, you know, right now, uh, our mission is money um, because we want to renovate the building. We need to renovate the building. Um, I mean, right now, the Center for the Arts is running stuff out of the building, um, and they can do it on a not a grand scale, but a small scale because we shut like two thirds of the building down um, to over winter so because it's so massive and leaky. And, uh, Right, but we aren't for generating any revenue but no, no, for ourselves. No, yeah, the, yeah. The big, you know, and this is not something that you're necessarily here to do. But I know, but we're going to be us. we're going to be in trouble in a little while. But yeah. hopefully yeah. not. But, but I mean, we are not generating revenue, and we do have a mission and have had an important mission. Mm -hmm. You know, to us, our mission, believe it, even our mission is a, is as important as the Academy of Music. Mm -hmm. We're not a beautiful historical proscenium stage theater, but we always have been a place where artists have been able to show small works and small exactly. companies have been able to work, and, and this is what we're missing here right now. And which is also why we can't get any CPA dollars. Or That's right. That sort of, because we're not historic. That's right. Um, we're not I mean, historic. You know, Holly Street. And, and the, again, it's hard. There are too many Northampton plus arts sort of organizations in Northampton to keep them all straight sometimes. Because people get us very confused. But the Arts Trust, we're about providing the space. We're not programming, per se. Our first order of business is to get a good envelope on that building, put a new roof on, tighten it up, and make it so that it could be run um, as cheaply as possible in terms of energy costs and whatnot. Um, but, you know, we, we, we made a play for Union Station in the knowledge that, boy, if we got Union Station, we could go for CPA funds because that's a historic structure and we could get historic tax dollars and mm -hmm. stuff like that. No offense to Holly Street. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's a, about a historic building. But, um, right. So, you know, so it's, it's, it's not one of the missions of the CPA, unfortunately, is to support arts. Well, yeah, no, that's, that's exactly right. right. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not something that we yeah, control, exactly. but so that, that would be nice if that yeah. was an additional but, right. mission. And so, that would have, and if <clears throat> we had had Union Station, I think that built in, there would have been a built in relationship with the city because of. CPA, also because of a certain amount of municipal parking that yeah, already well, and, existed. And right, train, right. I mean, that was and the easy, train. That, that was easy to see how that would be right. woven together. Um, Holly Street, you know, we're sort of we're doing it on our own, basically, because that's that's the way it's come down. Um, we're gonna have to ask for individuals for big amounts of cash and small amounts of cash. When grants come up that we think we can get, we'll be coming to the, to the mayor's office and with the individual counselors and saying, hey, we need a letter of support for this. Um, Do you have someone that's following grants and really kind of keeping your fingers on the pulse of what comes from the state and other and private foundations? I wouldn't say somebody keeping finger on the, on the pulse of what's coming out of the state, but there are three of us who are four, you know, how many, four or five or quote fundraising and we had you know uh, some consultants on hire and we're working on putting a grant package together and we've won two I mean we've won two grants. Um, and, uh, we have two grants on right two right. grants, one for the cultural facilities fund, which will go to not this cycle but the following cycle and one from the uh, executive office of finance and administration <laughs> for tourism and Western for supporting tourism. Right. And and that, by the way, was a uh, fluke. So yeah, anybody who finds a fluke, send it our way. No, I mean, seriously, when I say a fluke, we stumbled across a grant within two days of the deadline and actually got yeah. it. So we realized that, you know, even I think if someone had been keeping a finger on the pulse, they would have missed that one, because that one was way under the radar and turned out to be yeah. pretty, uh, it was great. It was great. It was it, great. It was but I mean, it was, it was under Google's radar. Right. right. It was. was it was way radar. under there. But to, oh. just to you know, because we don't have that much time, but to wind up a little bit about 
I mean, personally now at this point, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what the city is creating in terms of a new arts office, let's say. I think, I think it's hard to find a place for us in something that we're not, we're not quite sure what it is. And when I've, men I've mentioned the bid a couple of times, and even though the bid is null and <laughs> void and wasn't a city organization, in a, in a certain way, that was a very good crossover for us. The Center for the Arts was basically the arts and events arm of the bid. We weren't in the business of making a lot of money, but we were working together to keep downtown vibrant through the arts. And right now, as I sit here, I mean, this has been, you know, it's less than a week. It's a game changer. So, you know, I'm not trying to postpone things, but I'm saying I personally am feeling kind of disoriented and dislocated by this latest change. Because for us, that was a good uh, partnership. Right. And it was a good partnership for downtown and a good partnership for the city. And the city did have a defined relationship with the bid. Do you have a relationship with the chamber, and is the chamber, do you think, will it pick up any of the kind of arts activities in the well, city? Well, I'll, you know, this is also new. I'm working right now with someone at the chamber about at least, you know, an interim. I mean, you can imagine, we, this couldn't have come at a more difficult time, in a way, between, you know, holiday lights, first night, we've all got to make it happen. Um, but I think that what's what's likely to happen because of the timeline is that something will be cobbled together that will grow from the chamber. Whether the chamber would want to sustain that, I can't speak for them. I mean, I know that we ended up, that's the Center for the Arts, becoming a fiscal sponsor for Arts Night Out because the chamber, they just didn't feel it fell within their purview anymore as they have become more involved in this regional tourism effort. They were less focused on downtown. That's why I tell you things are already know. That's how we ended up with the bid, but we don't have a bid anymore, so we're gonna have to build a better mousetrap, I guess. Who are you dealing with at the chamber? Um, right now? You mean for, I mean, I don't regularly like deal with anybody at the chamber, but right at this moment, I'm working with Bud Stockwell, who's uh, an executive committee. And this is very new, this is like since, since today, since, no, I mean, really, since, 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 since they, emails over the weekend, since today, and there's a, a meeting on, on Thursday. And Suzanne Beck, I mean, she's very motivated into being involved in mostly everything throughout the city. She lives at our ward on Park Hill Road. I know. She's my neighbor. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think, I mean, I'm not, I mean, some, t I'm very sad about this whole thing. And I'm going to be honest here, and it bothers me hearing because I remember way back when you were at the J.A. Sullivan School, and I remember Mary Casper, everybody else, everybody highly involved, working together, and then all of a sudden I was shocked when you told me what had happened here. It's like, I have to agree, because why have you not, why has not the Center for the Arts been asked to sit down with the Arts Council and have a meeting and make suggestions and to be just left out. It's like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's not but right. there's been, you know, also too, I mean, I mean, there's been big changes in the Arts Council since Bob Silman retired. Bob Silman yes, is exactly. one of the members of the board of the Arts Show. So things are just changing. I feel like though in terms of art scene right now with what's happening with the bid, with the mayor doing a reorganization, I feel I feel a lot of flux, you know. Uh -huh. I really do. And because it's a certain time of the year for me and my focus is on just getting this one event done. Yeah. But now my focus is is oh. on keeping arts night out going. And so I think it, I expect that maybe the city will become, maybe, 
more involved. Be because we have to reinvent the bin and what they did, which was more than just cleaning the sidewalks oh, and the snow, it really, we, we worked hand in hand with them on these events and, and support of art in downtown. So somehow I think we've got to find a way to bring that Check all together. Is that, is that going to come out of the chamber? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this is a good opportunity. Maybe we have to look at that silver lining that yeah. this is a... Well, yeah, that's so. a way that, I don't think we have any choice. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> better, better make some lemonade. That's for sure. Just come to shove. <laughs> yeah. Right. Absolutely. Right. So as far as, you know, as far as specific recommendations, I just feel like right now the jury is a little out. I think that, I think we have to wait and see what some of the next steps are going to be. I think the, what Gina Louise is saying is really true, that we're also, it's a moment of opportunity. And I'm just wondering if, um, you know, you can't sit with all of your advisors and boards and anybody that, you know, is really close to what is going on internally for you guys and figure out, you know, in this moment when everything is changing, is there, are there certain concrete requests that, that you would like to make? And um, are there certain meetings that we could maybe help to facilitate, get set up? Mm -hmm. um, just think creatively and know that, you know, we're willing to talk to you about them. I'm not sure, I'm not, you can't commit to, you know, just anything at this point, but I certainly feel committed to seeing that you flourish. And if there's a way in which we can have the city involved in that process, mm -hmm. I'd like to. But unfortunately, I don't have the time to kind of create those ideas. But if you actually come to me and I can serve as a facilitator, and I think that's probably true for yes. everyone on this committee, um, you know, we're really making that offer very sincerely. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to be in one of these fora that you come in. Tell us you can well, that's important. Send us email I think really, as I said, ideas. we need a, or the Center for the Arts in any way, we need to have an understanding of re exactly how a newly revised, reorganized arts council is going to function and how, if, if there's any way that we can be incorporated or affiliated. And at the same time, we also have to find a way to keep our, uh, just keep our, our stake in, um, in, in downtown arts events. Arts Night Out is a big thing, and I'm not sure where we're going to have to go to, to overlap. So it, as I said, it's all pretty new, but I'd be more than happy to, I'd be more than happy to approach you again. Is something specific. I mean, do you feel like you would need us to broker a meeting with Brian and members of the Arts Council, or the, or is that something that you <laughs> can initiate? I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to be concrete here. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to know what you would need. But I've just heard you say that you'd like to be involved in that process, and so I'm wondering. Well, I feel like, I have to be honest, I feel like I would have liked to have been involved in something that I read about in the paper, you know, but what's the point if, you know, you can't go back, you can't change that. So I'm, I'm just waiting to see what it is and to see, and yes. Yeah. But I think Councilman Klein is correct of what she's just saying. <clears throat> yes, we know <coughs> something has happened here. You were not involved, but she's asking about possibly breaking the walls. See if we can get in there and let everybody sit <coughs> down and put their heads together and see what we can do. Mm -hmm. I think she's going in the right direction. Well, I'm just saying that if um, if we can facilitate something, right. please oh, let please us know. Shall be called upon if you to serve. Would rather, <laughs> if you would rather go directly to the, the people that there needs to I be discussion. I think sometimes a facilitator is a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I'm just not sure what I'm, I have to be honest, I, ha I don't really even know what's going on. So as soon as I catch up, then I think 
I mean, if, have you read the language? Should we send you the language? I mean, do you mean, I you just don't know language. what it's going to look I like? I haven't read anything. Oh, well, we can certainly, I mean, it's all on, that was, on the city website. Right. Like, we can, we can make sure you can I see I probably that. would have by now, had been for that little bit hiccup last week. I hear you. Um, <laughs> uh, we can make sure you see the language, but what it means in reality is, is a different see. story, which we can't answer yet either. It's also understood. Understood. We're here to help you to the best we can. We know that. And I think Alyssa Anything is else? going in the right direction. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. 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 That wasn't anything. To <laughs> that wasn't directed at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. We used to call it knackered in Ireland, you know. I am knackered. <laughs> it's big stuff. That sounds like a joke. Little dog in the house. So, just as I left that, we can come to church. Really for that? You okay? Oh, I was wondering, are you guys going to talk about those? We did already. We moved it. Yeah. Our first guest here. Yeah, we got 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 yeah. Um, but okay. also, because we're doing the next meeting to do the main discussion, yes. that's when we'll really kind of chew them up. That's fine. Yeah. So we're all set. Motion is approved. We're done. Okay. I think you were absolutely correct on Let me turn off the camera before oh. we talk anymore. I can't forget about that. We need a switch over here and so we can show I know. It's, 